Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Gentlemen, the national anthems of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United States of America.
عزبة هذه الموسيقية عزبة ثلاثة مقطعات القوات البحرية والقوات الجوية والقوات البحرية Allah wa salam. It's a great privilege to welcome a world statesman, a leader of Arab and Muslim people, and a good friend of the United States, His Majesty King Fahad bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Although he is no stranger to our shores, it's been almost eight years since he has paid an official visit to the United States. And I'm honored to welcome him back again today. King Fahad's visit is in keeping with the warm personal relations enjoyed between the leaders of our two countries, a tradition which began 40 years ago this week when King Fahad's father and President Franklin Roosevelt met to exchange views. The goodwill that emerged from that meeting of two great men has enormously benefited both our peoples in the last four decades. The friendship and cooperation between our governments and people are precious jewels whose value we should never be underestimate. The possessed positive nature of our relations demonstrates that cultural differences, as distinct as our own, need not separate or alienate peoples from one another. As the guardians of Mecca and the protectors of your faith, you rightfully exert a strong moral influence in the world of Islam. And the people of the United States are proud of their leadership role among the democratic nations. King Fahad, I hope that we can work together to seek a new rapprochement between the Islamic world and the Western democracies. Destiny has given us different political and social systems, Yet with respect and goodwill, as our two countries have demonstrated, so much can be accomplished. I firmly believe that in the years ahead, there should be and will be a more powerful recognition of the common interests shared by these two significant world forces. Already the bonds of commerce are strong, especially between our two countries. Petroleum from Saudi wells helps drive the engines of progress in the United States while at the same moment, American technology and know-how help in the construction of Saudi roads, hospitals, and communication systems. Saudi Arabia has grown into one of America's largest trading partners. The commercial and economic power that we exert in the world spurs enterprise and bolsters stability. I'd like to take this opportunity to express admiration for the responsible manner in which Saudi Arabia has conducted its economic affairs. King Fahad and other Saudi leaders, conscious of the global impact of their financial and economic decisions, have earned our respect and gratitude. Their many humanitarian contributions touch us deeply as well. Saudi aid to refugees uprooted from their homes in Afghanistan has not gone unnoticed here, Your Majesty. The people of the United States share with the people of Saudi Arabia a deep moral outrage over the continuing aggression and butchery taking place in Afghanistan. The citizens of the Western democracies and the Muslim world, by all that they believe to be true and just, should stand together in opposition to those who would impose dictatorship on all of mankind. Marxist tyranny already has its grip on the religious freedom of the world's fifth largest Muslim population. This same grip strangles the prayers of Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. 
We all worship the same God. Standing up to this onslaught, the people of Afghanistan, with their blood, courage, and faith, are an inspiration to the cause of freedom everywhere. Afghanistan, of course, is not the only conflict in the region. We are also concerned about the tragic war between two of Saudi Arabia's neighbors, Iran and Iraq, a conflict that is raging only a few minutes by air from Saudi territory. This bloodshed has dragged on far too long and threatens peace throughout the region. The United States will do what we can diplomatically to end the fighting, and we will cooperate with Saudi Arabia to ensure the integrity of your borders. Your Majesty, I look forward to our discussions about these and other serious problems which continue to plague the Middle East. Together, our considerable influence and our moral suasion can, at the very least, decrease the threat of war. If the Saudi and American governments focus their energies, progress can be made, especially in the lingering dispute between Israel and her neighbors. I continue to believe that a just and lasting settlement based on United Nations Security Council Resolution 242 is within reach. The security of Israel and other nations of the region and the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people can and should be addressed in direct negotiations. It is time to put this tragedy to rest and turn the page to a new and happier chapter. Bringing about a better and more peaceful world will require courage, integrity, and wisdom. King Fahad and others in his family before him have been admired for just these traits. I look forward to our discussions, King Fahad, and welcome to the United States. President, Ms. Reagan, the people, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Reagan. I'm very sorry because my English is not good. I tried to speak English, but I can't speak uh, English good. Now I speak Arabic. Very sorry. <clears throat> فخامة الرئيس أود أن أعبر لفخامتكم عن سعادتي بهذا اللقاء الذي يجمع بنا جميعا لأول مرة على أرض الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وعن ارتياحي للنمو المضطرد الذي تشهد العلاقات بين بين بلدينا وأتطلع إلى تبادل الرأي ووجهات النظر معكم لما فيه مصلحة بلدينا وشعبينا وقضايا السلام في منطقتنا. Mr. President, I should like to express my happiness on the occasion of my first meeting with you on the soil of the United States and express my satisfaction with the steady growth of relations between our two countries. I look forward to a fruitful exchange of views for the benefit of our two countries and peoples in the interest of peace in our region. Fakhamat uh, al-Rais, mindu an tam al-liqa al-tarikhi bayna jalalat al-mafur al-Malik Abdul Aziz al-Saud, wa fakhamat al-Rais al-Rahil Franklin Roosevelt fi mithl hada al-shahar mindu arba'in aam. بالتحديد فلقد دائب قادة البلدين على أن نجتمع من حين إلى آخر لدراسة الوسائل اللازمة لتنمية الصداقة والتعاون بين البلدين وللتشاور وتبادل الرأي
في الأوضاع الدولية بصفة عامة وفي مثل هذا الإطار تأتي زيارتي لبلدكم لبلدكم الصديق. Mr. President, since the historic meeting between His Majesty the late King Abdul Aziz Al Saud and the late President Franklin Roosevelt 40 years ago this month, the leaders of our two countries have continued to meet from time to time to discuss ways of promoting friendship and cooperation between our two countries and to consult and exchange views on international matters of mutual interest. This visit to your friendly country takes place in this same context. فخامة الرئيس اسمحوا لي ان اقلب صفحات التاريخ لاعود الى فترة ما بعد الحرب العالمية الاولى عندما كانت غالبية البلاد العربية ترزح تحت نير الاستعمار في الوقت الذي اعلنت فيه بلادكم المبادئ التي تنادي بحقوق الشعوب في الحرية والاستقلال وتقرير المصير في ذلك الوقت كان اسم الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية مرادفا لمعاني الحرية والعدل والاستقلال وكانت تطلعات الشعوب العربية متوجهة إلى الولايات المتحدة باعتبارها نصير للحق والعدل وها نحن الآن في عديد في عهد جديد اعادت عادت فيه الولايات المتحده الامريكيه تركيزها على تلك المبادئ وهذه المره تحت قيادتكم يا فخامه الرئيس permit me mr president to turn back the pages of history to the period following the first world war to the time when the majority of the arab countries were suffering under the yoke of colonialism when your country affirmed the principles that advocated the right of peoples to freedom, independence, and self-determination. At that time, when the name of the United States stood for freedom, justice, and independence, the aspirations of the Arab peoples were directed toward your country as the defender of truth and justice. Now we are in a new era in which the United States reaffirms those principles, this time under your leadership, Mr. President. فخامة الرئيس، ولقد نالت أغلبية أغلبية البلاد العربية حريتها واستقلالها منذ زمن بعيد ما عدا شعب واحد لم يعتر لم يقترف ذنبا يبرر ما ما لحق به. وأعني الشعب الفلسطيني هذا الشعب الذي لم يكن في يوم من الأيام معتديا أو غازيا وجد نفسه دون أي ذنب ارتكبه ضحية الاعتداء أثيم أخرجه من أرضه ودياره إن القضية الفلسطينية تهم الأمة العربية كلها وتؤثر على على علاقتها وبلدانها بالعالم الخارجي وعدم ايجاد الحل العادل لهذه القضيه هو السبب الاساسي في عدم الاستقرار الذي يسود منطقتنا وانني امل ان تساند حكومتكم قضيه هذا الشعب العادله ونحن لا نطلب الا وقفه عدل تنسجم مع تاريخ بلدكم العريق وتتمشى مع الدور القيادي الذي يؤديه في الساحة الدولية. Mr. President, the majority of the Arab countries gained their freedom and independence with the exception of one people, the Palestinian people, who committed no wrong that could justify what has befallen them. The Palestinians, who were never aggressors or invaders, found themselves, through no fault of their own, the victims of unjust aggression. The Palestinian question is the single problem that is of paramount concern to the whole Arab nation and affects the relations of its peoples and countries with the outside world. It is the one problem that is the root cause of instability and turmoil in the region. 
I hope, Mr. President, that your administration will support the just cause of the Palestinian people. فخامة الرئيس ولا شك في أن تفهم قضية الشعب الفلسطيني العادلة ستكسب الولايات المتحدة التقدير ليس في العالم العربي وحده وإنما في مختلف البلاد الإسلامية وفي البلاد وفي بلاد العالم قاطبة وكذلك الحال بالنسبة لعلاج المشكلة اللبنانية بانسحاب إسرائيل من الأراضي اللبنانية لكي يتحقق ضمان سيادة لبنان وسلامات أراضيه واستقلاله التام. We only ask for a just position that conforms with the history and ideals of your great country, a position that is consonant with its role of leadership in the international community. Such a position will earn the United States the respect and appreciation not only of the Arab and Muslim worlds, but also of freedom-loving peoples everywhere. Similarly, the, pro the problem of Lebanon needs to be addressed in such a way that would guarantee the withdrawal of Israel from Lebanese territory and the achievement of Lebanon's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and full independence. <coughs> فخامة الرئيس إنني أشارككم الرأي في أن المملكة العربية السعودية بمبادئها وعقيدتها الإسلامية السمحة والولايات المتحدة الأمريكية بمثلها وقيمها النبيلة تستطيعان معا أن توجد أرض أرضية مشتركة في مواجهة الظلم والعدوان والإضطهاد Mr. President, I share your view that Saudi Arabia, with its Islamic beliefs and principles, and the United States, with its ideals and values, can together find a common ground against aggression, injustice, and oppression. Ya Fakhamat al-Rais, amma fi ma yatalak bi Afghanistan, hada al-shab al-ladi yurid al-hurriya, wa yunadi. بأن يتصرف هو في شؤون الخاصة يجد الاضطهاد والاستبداد والاستعمار وقتل النساء والأطفال بدون أي مبرر. Mr. President, as far as the people of Afghanistan are concerned, this people who want nothing but freedom against oppression, freedom from killing women and children. This people deserve our help. يا فخامة الرئيس لا أريد أن أطيل في هذه الكلمة المبسطة المحدودة وأقول ختاما فإنه لا يسعني يا فخامة الرئيس إلا أن أنتهز هذه الفرصة لأهنكم على الثقة المطلقة التي أولاكم إياها شعبكم. بتجديد رئاستكم له لفترة ثانية وهذا إن دل على شيء فإنما يدل على مدى الثقة التي يضعها في قيادتكم الحكيمة وحكمتكم وبعد نظركم Mr. President, I do not wish to be long but I would like to say in conclusion that it is indeed a pleasure to have this opportunity to congratulate you on the full confidence that your people have placed in you by supporting your presidency for a second term. This clearly demonstrates the extent of the confidence your people have in your wise leadership and your far-sightedness. <laughs> ولحرمكم وللشعب الأمريكي ولرجال الدولة المسؤولين وأتمنى الولايات المتحدة كل توفيق وفي نفس الوقت لقد أكرمنا ربنا بأن أعطانا الشمس اليوم في هذا الإطار اللطيف الجميل And in conclusion, Mr. President, I would like to thank you very much and to thank the American people and all the officials of the U.S. government. And I wish you progress and good health. And I would like to thank God for giving us a beautiful sunny day today.
thank you very much. I hope uh, come again in the United States. I see many people, my close friend. And uh, next time I come just with uh, nothing, just for uh, like uh, anybody. Thank you very much.